Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode with Sharp Education. I'm really excited for this episode. This is a big one. So we've all been building up to the point where we're understanding what overfitting is. I've put a lot of tests in front of you guys, and some of them have looked okay, pretty good. But I've always sort of been speaking a little bit cryptically, like, mm, but you can't quite test that because of some unknown, mysterious reason called overfitting. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you exactly what overfitting looks like, what it is. So even though we don't have a really great uh, trading strategy to go with, or a really great model to begin with at all, the statistical significance of the variables we're working with is weak. The trading strategy we could build on top of it would probably be ineffective. We're still generally just guessing one every single time because that's what happens most often in the stock market, it rises. So we haven't come up with a really great trading strategy, but what we have been able to do is optimize our trading strategy based on the area under the curve. So by shifting our target variable out 120 different times, we can find which shift is the best for our weak trading strategy. And we can actually get some decent separation between what our model is able to classify as a true or false and randomly guessing. This is really important. Remember, when we just shifted randomly, like what if we wanted to look one hour ahead, we would get almost no separation here. Two hours ahead, still pretty bad. But when we tested every single one over 120 periods, we found that the optimal shift was 108 days. So you would want to be holding your position for 108 days to maximize the statistical significance of, your, of the variables included in your trading strategy. Great. But... That is just according to this one data set we've looked at. And now we have the ability using this train and test split function to break our data set into two different parts, training and test. So training data is what we're gonna be using to conduct this whole study. We're just gonna be looking at what the optimal shift would be on the training data. And then we're gonna do the same thing on test data. Now, if they're the same, then that means we can extend the results from our tests into real life. But if they're different, then we've encountered the number one most difficult part of building an effective trading strategy, and that is minimizing overfitting. Overfitting is the hardest part, the single most difficult factor of machine learning and other effective out-of-sample strategies that you would want to keep going forward. And I'm excited for today's episode because we're going to be visualizing exactly that. Even though we don't have a great trading strategy, we can still show, I can still show you what is going on. What is overfitting? So let's just get started. We're going to copy in a lot of our code from regression changes. We're actually just going to copy in all of it. Bang. And I'm also going to copy in our training and test split function. Control C. And this is into a file called overfitting.ipymb, creatively named by me. Get rid of all this. We don't need the main function right now. We need to make a global variable for train size. Train size equals 0.7. Perfect. So let's run everything here to get our file all initialized. Great. Now we want to make some functions to determine what our file here is going to do. First, what I want to do is get data. So let's define make data set. And the data set is going to be this first part of our regression changes main function, where we are just taking all of our technical indicators and the default data that we want. But we are not adding the target variable. And then after we've made our data set, remember we're gonna break it into training and test sets too. Train, test, split. So we have that function here too. And it returns the data frame, the train data frame, and the test data frame. So data frame, train, and test are going to equal train, test, split, the data frame. And we wanna return data frame, train, and test. Perfect. So now, I guess I could name this make data sets. So let's take a look at what we have to work with right now. 
data let's do data frame train train test data sets that's what I want should take a little bit of time to add all of our features price movements the MACD histogram the money flow index Bollinger bands relative strength index we've got it all so when we take our training data which is just the first 70 percent of our entire data set how many rows will we get in return 5,693 and our tr testing data is going to be a su slightly smaller sample uh, the last 30 percent of our study so 2,440 rows we are going to be conducting our study or optimizing our area under the curve on this training data set. We're going to try and come up with a chart that looks just like this one. What we want to see is a similar chart on our training data and then extending the logic that we get onto test data to make sure it keeps working. If it doesn't keep working, that means that we're identifying patterns in this data set that are specific to this data set. And then when we start deploying that logic onto future data, going forward, it doesn't hold up anymore because it's different data. It's different information. And the patterns that existed in the past don't matter. That's the that's whole game. See, it making a pattern that can keep going. And the stock market or any efficient market doesn't follow patterns like every other part of your life. It's a very unique space. Let's just keep going. So I'm, I'm getting excited or just talking before anything important happens. So get rid of those. Now we're going to make another function that is heavily inspired from regression changes here. And what I want to do is take everything from here onwards. Yes. And just apply that to a function that looks at the training data set. So let's say tab, define study data set. And the argument is going to be a data frame. Now, a data frame can be train or test. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as data frame. So we're exploring the shift, just like we did in regression changes. And if you haven't seen this episode, I highly recommend it. And then just to understand what's going on in this study here. From there, we're going to optimize the shift. I should have optimal shift defined here. So optimal shift at the start is none, right? Just global optimal shift be defined. Perfect. Okay, now let's take a look. Results data frame and results data frame equals study data set. And we're going to take a look at training data. Okay, so we get a plot that looks a lot like our train our, our regression changes file. Let's get rid of everything else. So this is regression changes. And when we used all available data, 100% of it, we got almost an identical plot. So the area under the curve, you know, increased up until 60, decreased again, and then increased all the way up at 108. 108 was the optimal holding period according to all of the data we have available. Now, according to our training data, it's actually the exact same. Even though the chart isn't exactly the same, you can see it's slightly different because we're looking at 70% of the data the optimal holding period stays at 108. So what we want to do is, based on this information, always be holding for 108 days. All of our holds would be 108 days long to maximize the effectiveness of our model. Now what if we did, instead of SPY one day, we can do Tesla one minute. Just look at a different data set so it might look a little bit more understandable holding for 108 days is not really day trading at that point. So if we're looking at minutely data on Tesla, our area under the curve is optimized at 54. Um, 
and I'm going to get rid of this comparison chart. So what we would be doing is holding for 54 minutes according to training data. Now, now that we're done with looking at the test data and seeing this area under the curve being 0.62 optimized at a shift of 54 minutes, I'm going to run the same exact function on test data. And test data, I'm hoping, would give me the same exact shift, 54. Let's take a look. Let's run study data set on test, control C, and then compare them, control V, test. So this is the remaining 30% of data that you wouldn't have time to look at, or you would have time to look, that you would intentionally not look at. And we're going to see what it looks like. Well, now the optimal shift is 82 minutes. So what would be happening is you would be training, you would be learning on all of the data you have available and understanding that 54 minutes is the best holding period, just because you've used all the data available for you. So going forward on this test data, in theory, you would say, all right, I got I to gotta be taking 54 minute trades, only 54 minute trades. If I'm holding for longer or shorter, I'm doing something wrong because according to the patterns that I've found in this training data set, I know what to do best. And if you weren't splitting into training and test data, you would be just looking at past data, everything you had available, and then considering that to be law. The patterns you can find there will keep going. But look at what's happening. When you split the data into training and test sets, you can see that there's a difference between what you can look at in the data set and what will happen going forward. Now, we've set this to be the 70% of data in the prior portion of your of all available data. And we've determined that 54 minutes is the best thing you can possibly do. Even though it's not great and your area under the curve is still 0.6, it's not it's fantastic. It's still optimized at, point, at 54 minutes. Now in test data or going forward, future looking data, you would be doing something completely wrong. In test data, in reality, we can assume test data is future data. The optimal holding period was 82 minutes. Weird. And why is that the case? Why are they different? It's because of overfitting. This is what happens every single time you backtest manually. And even when you backtest algorithmically, programmatically, using the strategies we've been doing, you inherently become over-dependent on the patterns that you have, can identify on any sort of data set. So this separation, this distinction between training data, what the, com what the computer is allowed to learn from, and what the computer can test what it has learned on is of paramount importance. You cannot deploy any effective trading strategy without having tested it on information that the, mod that the computer or machine has not looked at. If you're going solely on an algorithm that is built on data already seen, it, it will look really good. It will immediately be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> wow, I've maximized returns. I can just keep doing this. I've optimized my um, I've optimized my strategy so well to this data set that I know going forward it will just always keep working. It's not the case. The patterns you can find in any data set have no obligation to keep going. This is the number one struggle of an efficient market. It doesn't follow patterns. Any pattern that you can identify has no obligation to keep going. It's nothing like everywhere else in your life. It's completely different. And this difference, I'm going to see if I'm going to put it side by side. Yes, overfitting between our training data, which is here, and our testing data, which is here, is fascinating. You can see there's a difference of distributions when we optimize on our 30% training set. And let's we can do larger data sets too. We're going to get... Um, better returns on smaller data sets. So that's, that's a different, that's a different um, conversation. But let's do daily data for Tesla, just because it's sporadic. And I'm going to do the same thing here. 
and change it to Tesla one day. Oh. Oh, no, they're the same file. So when I make an adjustment here, it goes. Okay. So on this side, we're going to hold the training set, which is the first 70%. And according to the training data, you would want to be holding for 107 days on Tesla. That would maximize your returns. And then on the test set, study the data, study the test data. The optimal holding period is only 40. Big difference between what we have learned from and what works going forward. I'm like, to me, this is really cool stuff. I, I don't know if you're, you've watched this long, but what I'm watching, like, you should be fat. I am fascinated by this. Like, it is a clear representation, even though we do not have a really solid strategy. We're just looking at the MACD histogram, relative strength index, really basic indicators that everybody understands. You can still understand getting overfits or attaching yourself too thoroughly to a strategy built on any one data frame. Really important stuff. So if you're still here, congratulations. You're probably in the top five to 10% of algorithmic traders who can understand what the biggest problem with trading is. And I, if you're, again, you're not listening to people who tell you that there's some sort of behavior you can read in price movements and the patterns that they've seen will keep going. It's, it sounds like playtime at a kindergarten next to this stuff. And you're here, you're still on board. Really good work. Um, this is the foundation of what took me several years to build, which is Sharp Edge. I could not have done it without separating my data into two distinct data sets. So I knew that what was being learned was not only applicable to the data I was learning from. I was very confident and I was willing to project my ratings to the entire world because of the similarity of results on training data and test data. Right now, these are just optimized area under the curve, but for sharp edge, or any trading model that I've built, it, it I, I show like compounding returns and on training data, it looks really good. And then on test data, it does the exact same thing. So that means on data it hasn't seen before, it's able to continue performing. So now when I feed it new data each quarter, I'm very confident that it understands effectively what it should be looking for and why and that the ratings hold substance and you too because you followed along you've been a subscriber you've watched this entire video are now capable of understanding that like how to actually go about making a trading strategy this is episode 34 or something and this is going to be a last one for a while um, but this is the foundation this is the this is part one of my YouTube channel where I have gotten you introduced to the foundations of machine learning. And we're going to start, you know, there's a lot to go from here. But if you followed along so far, and if you've, if you've watched all of my episodes, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to be taking a break for a while. But this is really cool stuff for me to see how everything has grown really well. And now you're definitely much smarter than where you started out if you can understand everything that's happened up until this case i might have spoken a lot or repeated myself too much and i have i might not have elaborated on what needed to be explained either but feel free to put any questions in the comments reach out to nathan at sharpresearch.ai uh, with longer form questions as well and i'll be happy to answer them um again Thanks so much for your support. Congratulations on understanding this stuff. And until next time, stay sharp.